Would you like to accelerate your career and reach your full potential in just minutes a day? Welcome to the LeadX Show with New York Times bestselling author and Inc. 500 entrepreneur, Kevin Cruz. Are the most important negotiations the ones you have with yourself? Hello, everyone. Kevin Cruz here, helping you to achieve your full potential five days a week. And in just a minute, we're going to talk about a breakthrough method for leading, living, and lasting change. But first, don't forget to visit LeadX.org. You'll find hundreds of articles from the best business and career experts out there. LeadX.org. Our guest today is on the faculty at Harvard Law School. She's a New York Times bestselling author and a LinkedIn influencer, a senior advisor to McKinsey and Company Leadership Academy, and the founding partner of Mobius Executive Leadership. Her latest book is Winning from Within, a Breakthrough Method for Leading, Living, and Lasting Change. Our guest is Erica Ariel Fox. Erica, welcome. Kevin, thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to talk with you. Oh, I'm excited for our conversation, and we're going to talk about winning from within in just a minute, but I always like to start with this universal question, which is, can you share a time, uh, maybe early in your career, when you failed, and what did you learn from it? Well, when I thought about this question, really, of course, I came up with many, many examples, <laughs> but one of them that stuck out for me was when I had started a project, it was an initiative at Harvard Law School. It was a super important project to me, a real passion project, and I just gave it 150%, not only in terms of my time and my energy, but I felt everything other than that was a huge distraction, for example, including dating. <laughs> so I really refused to even engage with relationships for about five years. They felt like a real distraction to me from my mission. And when I look back on that, it was fulfilling to be so driven to fulfill something that felt important to me, but I really hadn't gained the perspective yet that a relationship is not a distraction. It can be actually an anchor that supports you and gives you fuel and foundation to pursue your dreams. So I wish that I'd had that insight a lot earlier. And I, I think of that as a active time in my life, but in some ways a little bit empty personally. Wow, Erica, um, thank you for sharing that. Obviously, a very uh, honest uh, story. And before we were recording, we were commenting on all the ways we think alike and have so many things in common. And this is another one. Um, listeners, when I was young and dumb in my 20s and I was starting up my, my companies, I thought I needed to be totally focused on the business, on the startup. So I also put out any time for her relationships, you know, friendships, barely yeah, saw the family, too, yeah. girlfriends were out, you know, it was all work, work, work. And again, it was only later that I looked back and Erica, just like you said, I realized, you know, it, it wasn't the wisest course. Like if I had had that anchor, as you say, if I had had a more balanced life, I think I would have been more productive and certainly more creative and a better leader, a better boss. So this is I think that's a, a fabulous lesson to, to take away. And, and Erica, your new book is Winning from Within, a Breakthrough Method for Leading, Living and Lasting Change. And let's start with the big picture. You say that you know most people are familiar with win win negotiating. But we often overlook the inner game of negotiation. So what do you mean by that? Well, I agree with you. People are familiar with the idea of having a conflict or dispute or an opportunity with someone else, and they want to reach a, an agreement, a so-called get to yes. My research and extensive experience working with professionals is people don't know how to get to yes with themselves so people have conflicts. I want to finish this project before I go to sleep, but I promised my family I'd be home for dinner. I want to take a big risk and pursue my dream, but it's not practical. You know, I'm doing the numbers. Can I afford it? We have conflicts inside ourselves all the time. And that's, in essence, negotiating with different parts of yourself to get aligned, to get agreement on your next courses of action. And if you don't do that, you're still making decisions and moving forward, but this background noise of internal conflict can really get in your way. So when you talk about internal conflict and really, you know, understanding uh, the conflict inside ourself, you, you talk about archetypes through human history and the different, you know, personalities that, w that we have. So what, what are you say you call them the big four and um, what are the, the four archetypes or personalities that we all sort of have inside of us? Yeah, I do talk about the big four. There's a lot of different research and models about these archetypes. Joseph Campbell wrote about a hero with a thousand faces, and those are probably 
you know, more thorough than my four, but helping professional people wrap their head around a thousand parts of themselves is a little overwhelming. <laughs> so I really focused on these four because my experience and research tells me if you can get your head around these four dimensions of yourself and get skillful and effective at using them, these are the fundamental dimensions you need for success at work and at home. And, you know, the other 900 plus uh, parts of yourself, that's the advanced course. But if you get the big four, you're going to be well on your way to success. So how do we, um, I mean, does everybody have the same four or some more dominant? How does that work? Yeah, this is something that's been incredible. I've taught in virtually every continent on earth. And I've taught people, you know, who are doing startups in their first job, entrepreneurs, people in family business, all the way to Fortune 100 companies. Um, there is some fundamental part of the human condition. So we all come in with a heart, with lungs, you know, if we're healthy. Um, we don't have to learn how to have our heartbeat or how to breathe. We know that when we're born. These are patterns that are really inborn to human beings, regardless of culture. It's true of men and women. And these essentially draw on logic, emotion, willpower, and intuition. And these are actually dimensions we all have. Most people draw on one or two of them much more than the other two. So we don't think of ourselves as having all four of those right. dimensions. But actually, we do have an innate capacity for them. We just have to learn how to use them. And um, Eric, I know I'm going a little bit off script here, but can you give an example? Like someone's facing some kind of decision or dilemma, and how can they get the four, you know, the four personalities to work together, the four archetypes to work together, like as a team to make that decision? Yeah, well, let me just name the big four. I talk about them as the dreamer, the thinker, the lover, and the warrior which is the part of you that dreams and has possibility. That's the dreamer. The thinker is about looking at facts and analyzing opinions. The lover is about people and relationships, and the warrior is about how to get things done. So sometimes I ask people, if you just literally step back from a decision and you take a piece of paper and you write these big four in front of you and you ask yourself, the dreamer, you know, what's your vision for how I should answer this? Thinker, you know, what are the risks or consequences, implications you want me to look at? Lover, how will this affect my relationships and how I feel in the end? And warrior, what are the three things you should think I should do immediately? And you step back and look at those four responses. You can do this in three minutes. And then take in all that information and just follow your gut at that point about where you feel pulled. It's very important, though, to ask each of the four. And most times we follow one or two of them without realizing it, and we miss out on some fundamental insight that we have by not asking. Erica, this is um, – wow, this is so triggering for me in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> um, and one of the things I remembered is it's not really popular anymore. And I forget the um, – there, there was a method of parallel – like uh, pa parallel – decision making in meetings. I think it was called like the six thinking hats or something. And the idea was when you would run a meeting, uh, we know how most meetings are run. They're not that effective. Um, but the idea would be like, okay, everybody put the red hat on and red meant yeah, like yeah, yeah, problems, yeah. right? So now we're all attacking the idea on why it's horrible. And then like, let's put our green hat yeah. on. And I can't remember yeah. what they all were, but um, it, that used to sort of be in vogue. And But Kevin, let me say something yeah. about because this is a nuance that's important. There are a lot of typing systems, you know, professionally, um, especially in earlier levels of professional development. People do DISC. Right. They do Myers-Briggs. Right. They do the, what you're, you know, are you more red, green, yellow, blue? Right. And I think to some extent those things are helpful. But typing systems also have a big risk. Not only do they put you in a box as seen through your colleagues, they put you in a box as seen by yourself, you know, should I raise my hand for that opportunity? Well, someone yellow should do that. and I'm red. I'm not good at yellow. The big four is very different than a type. You might have a way of operating today in how you use each of the four. But because you have an absolute innate, meaning even in the physiology of your brain, you have different aspects of your brain designed for each one of these big four styles, you're not – sort of doomed to this profile, you know? I right. mean, it's not a type that you can never transcend. Like, I have my Myers-Briggs, and that's it. Over the course of your leadership development and your life development, you can get more and more skillful at every one of the big four. And it's just not true that you're a thinker and not a feeler. That's not true in, in the human experience. You have the capacity for both, and you can learn to use both over the course of your career. 
Yeah, and I love that distinction, and this is I I think that's great and does make it um, powerful and and sort of like I was talking about getting multiple people outside of our, you know in a meeting aligned. This I could see this kind of uh, getting the the four Kevins <laughs> aligned exactly because I now listeners I really did this I wrote down dreamer thinker warrior lover on a piece of paper as Erica was explaining this. <laughs> And immediately I realized that I'm usually a thinker warrior. So I kind of circled those. And um, I now understand, like, as I'm making decisions or if I'm not feeling, like, right or clear about something, it's not that I am not the dreamer lover or, or whatever, but I need to pause and say, okay, let me come from that feeling place, you know, the the, the relationship place and, and think about this decision. Uh, let me do it from a dreaming perspective. And so – That's right. And I think also that, that- – the notion of negotiating with yourself would be to say, so I, I have this sense of internal angst, you know, maybe I have somatic symptoms, I'm getting migraines or, right. um, you know, I'm just overeating because I'm stressed. If you can find a way to just, again, write on a piece of paper, tell it to a friend, write it in your journal, I'm, I'm feeling this conflict between my dreamer who's visionary and my warrior who's practical and just wants to do things today rather than trying to choose between them. You can ask them, so-called negotiate with each other, which means, can I find a solution here that both sides of me will be comfortable with? Is there a way to be both visionary for the long term, practical for the short term around this opportunity, and how could I do that? So I'm not choosing between satisfying them. That's sort of an internal win-win. So both sides of myself have reached an agreement that both of them feel content with. Whereas most of the times in life, we feel that tension, and then we just choose one over the other. Right. But that's not actually negotiating with yourself. That's just leaving part of yourself behind. That's win-lose. That's not win-win. Correct. Correct. And we know, (laughs) that's right, That we and we know that in negotiations with other people, if you leave out something that was really important to one of the people, that negotiation might break down. Over time, the person would feel resentful and not do their part of the agreement, you know, and that's the same with these internal parties inside of ourselves. If you ignore the priorities of a part of yourself and you don't have real alignment in your big four, dreamer, lover, warrior, and thinker, one of them will start to rebel <laughs> and they will take you down. <laughs> we got to listen to all four, make sure they're all happy. So, so Erica, is this, you know, when you talk about you know, a big secret is finding your center, getting centered, be aware when you're off center. Is that the same thing as the alignment of, of the four four types, or is it something else? It's a little bit different. It's actually whether you can notice that you're sort of relaxed, you're calm, you're open, or you're freaking out. So if I'm going to go on a trip and I know that my Uber is outside and I grab my stuff and I think, oh, no, I don't know where my passport is. And now I'm freaking out because my ride is here and the flight is coming. And I think everyone knows that experience. You're, you're, you're not thinking clearly. You're running around. You're getting frantic. That's an uncentered state. <laughs> you're not right. going to make good decisions in that state. Whereas also we know the experience of, you know, being relaxed and talking to a friend and at the extreme getting a massage. Right. We're totally blissed out and not frantic. So one of the things – people can learn to do many times over the course of a day is just check in with yourself that, you know, am I being sort of centered and productive? Am I freaking out right now? Am I distracted because my manager just said something in a meeting and and now I think they hate me and I'm going to get fired. If you pay attention to that, you can learn how to notice and bring yourself back to a state where you're, you know, able to learn and not be defensive. You're able to see your own role in problems, not blame other people. Just all that good mental focus and emotional clarity comes from being centered, if that makes sense. Yeah, it absolutely does. I, I, this is really awesome stuff. So I always like to end, though, like let's boil it down. And because I like to challenge our listeners, I say, look, every day try to get 1% better or at least Monday through Friday. <laughs> so, yeah. Is there something you can challenge our listeners to do in this area, to like experiment with or to try today? I think just to build on what we were just talking about, try to pay attention to moments in your day. And you can do it at night when you look back over your day. You know, when I started to really lose it, I was reactive. I was in survival, you know, fight, flight, freeze. I wasn't being intentional with my behavior. And 
when you start paying attention to that, the next time it happens, in that moment, take a deep breath. People say count to 10. You know, think of something right. that makes you happy. Picture yourself in a lovely place and practice calming yourself down in the moment. And if you start doing that tomorrow, you'll be surprised. On any given day, you will fall off center at some point and then start practicing these techniques, even just saying to yourself, I'm okay, I'm okay. <laughs> no, right. And it calms you pretty quickly, actually. I think that's great. Erica, what's the best way our listeners can find out more about you and your work? So reading the book, of course, I think is a great way to learn. But at ericaarielfox.com, we have a big four survey, which is very short and easy, just like your survey. It's great. Quick information, feedback on your big four profile. I encourage people to find that on the site. Uh, I also am blogging regularly on LinkedIn so people can follow me there uh, and people can just reach out also and we'll get back to them. Excellent. All right, friends, we've just gotten these value bombs from Erica Ariel Fox. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget, you can get all the links mentioned and the notes from this interview over at leadx.org. You can get Erica's new book from Amazon.com or your favorite bookstore. And listeners, if you've got just one interesting idea out of this show, I hope you'll hop on over to iTunes, leave a short, honest review. It would mean the world to me. And remember, until next time. Leadership is about influence, not authority, which means you're a leader whether you want to be or not. You're influencing those around you whether you want to be or not. My question for you is, what kind of leader will you be? 